Okay, uh, standard construction. This is the current um, modern aircraft. We do have various sections. We do have various materials being used. And if you look at this aircraft, uh, you will, you will see um, you will see the uh, the 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 snow section, the center section, the tail section. We have vertical stabilizer, horizontal stabilizer, and we have wing, and we have four, four engine as well. And most of the time, the center wing is uh, carbon fiber reinforced plastic, CFRP. And some are machining. So we completely machine the, especially the wing skin, is completely machined. And we also do have, this is some example of carbon fiber reinforced plastic wing ribs and we have carb flow beam fiber flow beam for 777 fully made of carbon carbon fiber reinforced plastic and we also have telcon so mostly on the engine they use titanium because of the heat so they need to use a material which is able to uh, able to sustain the heat and there are some also they call it glare the airbus has been using glare this is hybrid of carbon and aluminium and the growth of industry uh, from 1970 to and now it's uh, 2021, so up to six years ago, the data show that uh, more than 50% of aircraft structure component made of composite beginning 2010. We do have 787, we have 350, and those are the latest one, the 350 are the latest one, we also have 787. So, you can see the 350 the highest one having the component made of composite. That is the latest aircraft being certified. Mm, the materials uh, we have, this is uh, uh, how the advanced material change the structure. More and more big uh, aircraft company will be using the composite material as uh, to be the structure. So this is what the material look like. I think we have seen this in at Miat, where you have dealing with carbon, Kevlar, glass as a fibers, and we also have uh, matrix, which is the resin. So fibers and matrix made of make the composite. Fibers, normally the cloth, uh, carbon cloth, Kevlar cloth, glass cloth, and which is fabric. And uh, we have brush up lay, uh, the resins over it, and then it become cured, and you have part, you have parts, you have cured part. However, for the modern composite, they have the resin impregnated with the fibers. That's why we call it pre prac pre-impregnated with resin and they just lay up over the mold and let it cure you have the part you don't have to brush off with the resin anymore so why you call composite because composition composite composite is combination of things so we have fibers we have metric fibers plus metric with composite so the fibers normally uh, what we do now we do have carbon we do have kevlar we do have fiberglass and the matrix is epoxy resin and that's how we get the composite so carbon uh, basically used for high strength and the kevlar used for the area where require impact because kevlar will uh, is able to accept absorb impact better than any other composite material. The layout, we have a mold. We do the uh, fabric, we lay up over the fabric over the mold, and then you cure it. 
So this is the old method. We have uh, this was not pre prepared. We have uh, this is called wet layup. Why wet layup? Because we dry, we apply those resin uh, over the fabrics and we let it cure after that. So this is wet layup because this is uh, messy with the resin. This is the construction using uh, this ribs has been manufactured using uh, machining. So this is metal. Metal normally we use machining to make the piece or we do have, we do use for the thin metal, we do use uh, chemical milling. So, and then we have here ribs. Ribs is uh, forming. There are forming ribs. They are also extruded ribs. So mostly ribs are forming. For the lighter aircraft design, for the lighter design, for lighter aircraft, we use a lot of forming. We don't use a lot of uh, uh, machining because machining is expensive. So these um, pieces of skin will be riveted to the ribs by using rivets. You can see this all the cleco. Uh, and then uh, you, you move it and you replace with the Reverts and you revert them together. This is standard construction. Uh, basically, I show this photo. Uh, this is for the uh, very basic standard structure construction. We do have fuselage, wing, empennage, empennage, which is horizontal stabilizer, and vertical stabilizer. We have engine, we have landing gear. So, this is basic construction of aircraft. So we look at the detail, uh, there is also a uh, detailed design. We do have members in the structure. We have the strong members in structure, it's bar head. Bar head will be in between the section of the fuselage. And we have stringers, the small piece that running longitudinally from nose to tail, that is stringers. And the skin itself, which is attached to the, which is riveted to the frame, Reverted to the longeron, reverted to the the <coughs> stiffness, and the foremost is something is is also between a section. However, it's a bit smaller, and this is just a small piece of the bahi. So this construction they call it semi monocoque. We call it semi monocoque because all carry loads. And we have also another section construction which is monocoque. Uh, the, st the skin carry the load, less stinger, no stingers, less for most, less for head. So most of the load we transfer to the skin and skin carry the load. So this we call it monocoque structure. And another, another uh, items in the construction, we do have longeron, skin, stingers and by head. I think you have seen the by head before, you have seen the stinger, you have seen the skin. The longeron is another uh, item that we use. This longeron is very thick, heavy material running from nose to tail, longitudinally. So if you see very thick, heavy material, metal cross section, which is running from nose to the tail, that is longeron. Then you also can see here, we have frame, longeron, skin, Stingers and bahit. There's another feature to show all these such a component. And uh, basic such a, this is another term we use for more frame, ring, bahit, longeron, stringers for the fuselage. For the, for the military such a, also we use the same terminology. We will not be using different terminology. Uh, such a build up in detail, you can see the detail. This is large transport aircraft. You can see the stringers. Massive stringers, there is cut out for the door. There is a massive doublers around the door to ensure there is no damage grows into the, in, from the door. Because the door has a cut, the cut is stressed. When the stress is high, it tend to uh, get damaged. And normally, most of the damage started from this kind of construction from the door. So, this is how the semi finished fuse last. You can see there are two sections underneath here is a cargo compartment. We have the vertical, we have the, uh, the, the floor, floor beam, floorboard, floor beam. The floor itself where you, uh, there's a, there is a, a seat track running across longitudinally and where all the seats is, is tied to. 
So we bolted the seat to the seat track. So this is another detail of interior of the aircraft. So another detail you can see here. Okay, this is one that I showed earlier. This is a simple, this is a close up of the, line, of the structure. We have the butt head, we have the seniors, and we have the skin. You can see how the seniors will attach to the skin. There's another massive uh, construction for the aircraft. You can see it's very uh, massive, very heavy. We have many sections. We have main door. Also, we have main door, we have cargo door, and we have emergency. This, as far as the door is concerned, we have four or five doors for construction. Okay. This is simple construction. However, you got everything. I show you this construction because it has uh, all the terminologies, skin, we have ribs, stringers, wing tip, aileron, okay, sorry, spars, and wing flaps. So we have a complete structure construction, which can explain the standard uh, wing design. The thing that's different here is the ribs. Rib is something that make, uh, is in the shape of the airfoil. And then the wing skin are wrapped around it, riveted to it. So ribs are something different. The rest like skin, fingers, spa, uh, wing, uh, this spa is also different. So, so the, for, the such, for the construction of the wing, we have front spa here, we have half spa. And the wings, the spa, front spa and half spa make the wing box. So it's just like a box construction. We also do have wing tips. So this is how we see the spa because the spa will take all the load. So all the spa will be designed with the with the top section here, which is a extrusion cap, extrusion cap, and we have a skin uh, between the extrusion, and this make up the the spa design. Another diagram showing the complete structure. Uh, what we our interest is to look at the terminology. We have spa rib thing as a skin here. So this close up how the spa is constructed. We have front spa, we have rear spa, and the ribs will be in between. We install the ribs. The spa will be also attached to the ribs. Then that is uh, the makeup of the whole wing, the whole wing construction. Any questions so far? This is just let review. You have done it before. Okay, sir. No yeah. question, sir. All right. And then we go into join, which is uh, riveting, bolting, or bonding. There are three joins technique. Riveting and bolting, we call it mechanical join. And bonding is adhesive joint, bonding joint, adhesive. So this riveting bolting are fasteners, rivet and bolts are fasteners. Uh, <clears throat> and normally they use uh, uh, solid rivets. Most uh, the most the most used rivets are solid rivets made of high strength aluminium. And now they also have uh, mechanical uh, fasten rivets, like jaw bolt, hard bolt, eye lock. Those are having a steel pins inside. So the solid rivet, where you just draw the rivets in the hole, then the 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 the, the head will form. So this original head, where it's come from the factory. But the manufacturer head will forms after you do the riveting. Okay, there are also some steel, aluminium, and titanium, titanium and mono rivet. Sorry. Okay, we have rivets, solid rivet, special fastener, special fastener pins, uh, which is uh, threaded with some switch. The threaded pin is just. Uh, Put the pin, you just uh, turn it, the shank, turn the shank, and then uh, turn the shank, and then you got the pin breaking off, 
and the shank still there, and that is uh, normally we call it high lock, uh, lock bolt. So those in that category. Blind fastener is cherry and and hard bolt. Uh, cherry is uh, cherry blind fastener. Cherry when you are able to get access uh, to the other side, you just uh, put in the river. You just put the river from outside, and the form will uh, uh, form nicely. Uh, behind the rivets. Okay, so aluminium rivet solid, made of material one one zero zero. And later, I'll, I'll, I'll go to the detail in the aircraft structure repair on the rivet selections. This is standard aluminium alloy rivets. You can see this is flush. This is flat head. Then we have a universal. We have round head, and most of the time we use the universal head. Easy to to install. We also have mono rivet. We also have titanium rivets, and we do have special fasteners, special fasteners, or the high lock. High lock is special fasteners because uh, it's not drawn by force; it's just by pulling out the shank. Here you can see here is the the head will form behind after you pull this around. Lock bolt also the same. You can see the lock bolt you put in here. Uh, the collar and the collar you turn around so they break somewhere here and the collar will form nicely to tie the two structure members. Okay. So the, don't, we use this a lot. I don't think you may not see this a lot in yet, but we use this a lot in the in the industry uh, because mostly Boeing and Airbus using this high lock lock bolt. Table lock. If you have some uh, in the in the hole, which is not uh, is a th is a not uh, is a table, then we use a table lock. Bolts. Bolt have to come with the with the fastener, with the screw, with the washers. So you have to use the proper washers. Screw screw is something that you. You screw in normally, we not use this a lot. We don't use a lot of screw in aircraft structure. Blind fastener, again, I was explaining to you, is something you don't get access if you want to install uh, some plate or put the plate together in the area. We cannot guess, get access to the other side to put your to place your bucking bar, then for the solid rivet, then we use these uh, uh, blind rivets. And uh, most of the aircraft structure design, most of the aircraft. Most, most of the aircraft OEM does not allow to use uh, blind rivet permanently. You can use it for the for the temporary repair. Okay, and let's show the rivets. Hub. Okay, this is hub port. There's a many type of uh, uh, blind rivet. Cherry, this is standard. We use this a lot. However, again, this is not to be used permanently. I think it's with you. I can just uh, you can just read through them. Next, after mechanical fastener, we have metal to metal bonding. There's a bonding adhesive. You can see in the aircraft structure manual, there's how much uh, area now been been bonded together rather than purely mechanical fastener. And then when you do work, you have to prevent the material from corrosion. And then in order to do that, you have to put the protection. There are several protection uh, available which you need to use, like chemium plating. Uh, we have chemium plating, uh, anodizing, and we have uh, chrome plating. So those are the protection on the structure. We also do have prime and paint the structure. That also protection. Okay, this is some something you can see from the menu. I don't want not want to go too much detail on this. Just browsing them through. Something you have done before. Okay, this is in the menu. You can see in the menu what we have. We have uh, the protection requirement will be spelled out in the menu. When you do the repair, you go to the menu. And you can find what is the required protection uh, surface statement for the for the such a part. So this is uh, if you're looking at academic plating, anodizing, and those are 
this uh, goes at the process of uh, electrolysis, where some part will be deposited over the other. So this is how big chemium uh, bath. We do have very big uh, coating company in Malaysia now where they do have this kind of facility and to do the coating for the craft parts and components. So this is also chemical conversion coating, uh, chemical conversion coating, they apply the chemical, chemium plate. There's also in situ chemium plate. You can do it without going to the workshop, to the bus. You can do at site. Okay, zinc spray. I think part, some part of this you can read yourself. Energizing is electrolysis process again. Also, we do have corrosion. We have to be careful when you choose the material. If for repair, first you need to know is what is the material, then you have to the best possible way to choose similar material. If you're not able to have similar material, you have to choose a similar nearest material in the table. Like this. So because we want to prevent corrosion to occur. So corrosion prevention just by coating. That's how corrosion work. Corrosion also is the process of electro electrolysis. That's why we try to in the design requirement, you have to eliminate as much moisture as possible from the aircraft because the moisture will be the electrolysis and where there is a more moisture, water and there is metal, then you have this uh, electrolysis process occur and then you start to have the corrosion. Okay, this is the corrosion, protection coating. Special coating, this is not really what we want to focus. However, we like, I would like to show you this because later on when you do the design or the repair, you must not forget all this coating because this coating is mandatory to protect the structure from environmental degradation. Another way to protect the structure is you install sealant. You can see here how sealant we install. We have this channel riveted to the skin and then we encapsulate this construction with, uh, with sealant. The sealant to prevent the air moisture go into the between of the structure part to cause corrosion. So this is also sealant technique in the such a manner. How to install sealant? Drainage in in uh, and ventilation. Why is so important? It's important because it is in the design manual. No, sorry, it is in design requirement. It is in the awareness standard. Uh, awareness design standard. Awareness design standard does not allow any collection of mo water moisture. So you have to have proper drainage and ventilation in your design. So when you do the repair later on, please make sure this is one of the provision you need to cover. You need to ensure the proper drainage and ventilation uh, from your repair. If the repair collecting water, then the repair is not good and the repair can cause more problem than, uh, than before. Okay, so this is a drainage. Drainage bath in the case one. Okay, so far any, any questions? No, sir. So far, very clear. Okay. Okay, let's move on. So the such a component we we'll be dealing with just explaining you about the structure of the aircraft, how they've been built, what they are. So from one from each one of it. Still I do not want to go too much detail because again I think you have done it before. We just I just try to cover the, the construction detail which is related to the, the, the study and frequently get damaged and require repair. So what we have here again with the terminology, we have structure, this is truss structure. This pieces is uh, welded together for small aeroplane. You 
you don't see this in large aeroplane, we have the, uh, we have Longeron, we have we have web member. So this is typical construction of old aircraft, which is uh, fully thrust. So the skin does not carry load here, or the load taken up by all this thrust. So this is how it looks like. And again, we go into terminology semi monoco and monoco. So semi monoco, you can see the large construction here for the large aircraft. You can see the frame is coming up. They have not installed the stringers yet, but they already in the jig. So they how they how they begin constructing the aircraft. If you go to boat industry, they use the same concept as well. You just they use the bar head first, and then everything will, will be built around the bar head. Similar the diagram I have shown you, they are very complex structure construction here, and monoco is explained here. We have also a detailed explanation of what monoco and what former bar head. Okay, let's sell. Fuel slash. So this is fuel slash. This is also structure. This is the most critical structure because anything happened to the fuel uh, for the landing gear, the landing gear will collapse. You lost the whole aircraft. So most of this landing gear made of forging. They forge. They have uh, melted the metal, uh, red hot, and they just uh, knock them to the shape according to the mold. That is uh, they call it forging. Okay, if you pour liquid metal into the mold, they call it casting. So we cannot run away from having a forging, it's very high strong, high strength. Forging is very high strength after you have the shape, they machine it to the exact shape as shown. So this is one of the example of safe life. Safe life structure, if you lost the learning gear, you lost everything. So make sure learning gear has to be uh, overhaul within the, the uh, overhaul time. Time between the voice is given and you have to follow it and make sure this is a overhaul. So again, you have nacelle, nacelle also. Nacelle is part of the power plant, it's not engine. Engine inside the nacelle. And the engine will be bolted to the to the pylon. The pylon will be bolted to the fuselage. So the structure uh, in this case is the pylon. Pylon must have must be very strong. And uh, you can design the pylon and you design the nacelle around the pylon. This so recently, yesterday or two days ago, you can see the aircraft got fire. The nacelle all burned, aircraft still flying. Because the structure, the nacelle just enshrouding a case as a casing to the engine. The, the engine still stay because the engine mount still there. The pylon still there, so that's why the engine stay still there. Still there, even though the engine still flat, still still uh, caught fire. I mean, the engine still burning. Sorry, you can see the video. The engine still burning. The car still flying. Very interesting video. So let's break up. There are many pieces of this. If if you want to see the the material, how they make this, you can go to a CTR marker. CTR marker make all this huge, huge nacelle. There are many pieces. The engine inside, we don't talk about the engine. The nacelle just enshroud so that the engine able to have the flow, good flow to come in, a flow to come to the engine and good uh, system to discharge the flow, the exhaust. So that engine will be very efficient if you are, you are able to get a good flow and discharge the flow efficiently. So this is break up the engine in detail. Break up the wing in detail. This empennage. Empennage is a is the combination of the horizontal stabilizer and vertical stabilizer at the tail of the aircraft. So those typically we call it empennage. And still they carry the same design. If you want to understand the empennage, it's just like another wing, vertical wing or small horizontal wing. So they still have the, the terminology of ribs, spars in this empennage, vertical stabilizer and horizontal stabilizer. So again, this is how the wing construction being constructed, how the wing being constructed, the detail construction of the wing. So we still have spa. The most important thing for the wing, if people ask the question, what are the most important feature of the wing? The spa, the ribs. So we cannot run away from those two. For us, we not call it, we not call it wing. Again, the detail of the spa, uh, rear spa, video rear spa. So this is a basic construction of the aircraft. 